So here's a bit of a summary of some of the different metabolic wastes and where they go. All cells are going through cellular respiration, that process where we break down energy-rich molecules. We use glucose as our typical example. It's the most common one used, but again, <coughs> fatty acids, <coughs> glycerol, amino acids, other sugars, those can also go into it as well. But anyway, <coughs> those get broken down, and eukaryotes, characteristically, we have the aerobic cellular respiration in mitochondria, where <coughs> the two halves of the glucose that were broken <coughs> by glycolysis out in the general cell, moving the mitochondria, go through our different <coughs> steps, our <coughs> acetyl coenzyme A, the citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain make lots of ATP, but also make water and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is in land animals, vertebrates anyway, typically largely expelled out through the lungs, carried through the blood, and then released there. Water, of course we use some of the water, but water also again gets breathed out as water vapor, Sweat released from the skin. Some of it goes through the digestive system out with feces. And also it goes into the kidney and some of it goes out the urinary system as part of the urine. <clears throat> In addition to all our cells doing their respiration, we have some other processing that primarily happens in the liver. <clears throat> Hemoglobin, that's our key protein for carrying oxygen in the blood. <coughs> and our red blood cells, no nucleus, so they're not making new stuff. They're going to be breaking down eventually <coughs> and replaced by new ones. And so we've got a lot of old hemoglobin to deal with, to break down and process. And that makes bile pigments dark colored <coughs> chemicals contain that extra iron from the hemoglobin, things like that. And the bile pigments are secreted into the digestive system and go out with the feces. And that is why your poop is typically dark colored. That dark color comes from the bile pigments. The liver also can break up old nucleic acids and excess amino acids and produce uric acid and urea. And these will be filtered out by the kidneys and go out with the urine. Again, this is a pattern from mammals. You do have some differences in other types of animals. So in mammals, the basic parts of the urinary system, we've got the kidneys, the bladder, and then the associated ducts carrying the fluid. So the kidneys actually make the urine and then flows through one of the ureters, one of these tubes here, to the bladder. <clears throat> and then from time to time from the bladder you'll have <clears throat> the urine released through the urethra. So the main purpose of a kidney is to maintain your proper balance of water and of various dissolved materials and to get rid of the metabolic waste, especially the nitrogen containing ones. Kidneys also have key functions in the endocrine system. You have hormone producing glands associated with the kidneys, so they are important there as well. And so these tubes closely associate with capillaries the tiny vessels from the blood system to pick up the stuff that needs removed from the blood and return the things to keep. <clears throat> so we have three main processes. Filtration, capillaries, again, do have a degree of leaking of fluid and dissolved stuff out from them into the surrounding tissues. And so that, not everything can fit through the cracks, but what does go can go into the kidneys. Then the kidney processes that. We have further reabsorption. So the stuff that the body wants to keep gets <clears throat> absorbed 
back out of the, that stuff that leaked out of the capillaries. <clears throat> the waste, however, is kept in to excrete. We also have specialized tubular secretion, the waste we really don't want. We're actively getting rid of, not just what will diffuse or filter out. So we have the active transport of waste out of the blood into the tubes of the kidney to move on. Kidneys work hard, do a good job of this in general, but if for some reason there's an excess concentration of things, that can be a problem for the kidneys. For example, in diabetes, you've got abnormal levels up and down of the glucose in the blood. It's not being processed properly. And then the kidney has to deal with all this extra glucose. And that's a strain on it, causes problems. Diabetes often gets you to kidney failure. So here's a diagram. The yellow represents the ducts, the tubes of the kidney. The red and blue representing the blood system, red coming from the heart, more oxygen rich, the blue headed back to the heart, more oxygen poor. In addition to giving the oxygen that the kidney cells need, <coughs> this very close interaction <coughs> between the capillaries from the blood system and the kidney tubes provides areas for the chemicals to move either from the blood to the kidney or from the kidney to the blood. And the direction of the system is set up to help <coughs> with getting the things we want, get rid of the things that we don't want. <clears throat> and then, of course, those wastes are moved on to the bladder and then, <clears throat> uh, assuming you haven't been smoking so that your bladder regulation still works, then you can control when to get rid of the excess. <clears throat>